Hi, I haven't posted a <coughs> YouTube video for a little while, so today I thought I would uh, just do a little bit of a review of one of my favourite Pentax cameras, the Pentax MZS. It's a beautiful camera. It's this one here. <coughs> and it was the last professional, basically the last professional Pentax film camera that came out and arguably the best one in my opinion. Not that I ever owned the Pentax LX before this or the, the Z, Pentax Z1 I think it was. But this is a great camera and uh, I'll just take you through some of the features in a minute. Uh, before I do that I'll uh, just touch on a few things in this magazine. This is I learnt everything in photography before the internet on magazines. This is a pro photo magazine, an Australian magazine and on the front here it says exclusive first test Pentax's new top end 35mm SLR and uh, if we open up to page 32 which I did before I'll be able to tell you a little bit about what it says in here and um, says this Pentax returns to the this is the year this was printed in July 2001 and this is a not long after that that I bought the camera <clears throat> and I use this for weddings and all sorts of other things as well. So, Pentax MS, MZS, the lightweight contender. Pentax returns, Pentax returns to the top end of the 35mm SLR market with a competitively priced camera which challenges the notion that big is better. Paul Burrows, is a well-known Australian uh, photography writer, tries the MZS for size. He talks about comparing it to Canon and Nikon. Uh, Canon or Nikon, this is the choice for most buyers venturing into the above $2,000 class of 35mm SLR. And uh, he talks about Minolta should have been there as well at the time. Uh, but Minolta might, might find the struggle even harder now, he says, now that Pentax has decided to get serious at this end of the market. So it's a beautiful camera, very smart design. And uh, I'll go through some of this, and if I can't think of anything that's in, covered in here, uh, I'll, I'll refer back to the, uh, to the magazine in a minute. So, I'll come up here and show you some of the dials there. So we have, um, this is your turn on and off button, just there and there, and incorporated in that button there is a depth of field preview. So when you push that sideways, it gives you a depth of field preview through the uh, the lens and uh, of course this is also the focusing button one of the good things about this is I've got a um, a holder an extra battery holder which runs off 4AA batteries which also when you turn this on it enables you to actually hang on I'll just work out where it is um, to actually shoot the camera in vertical and uh, there's an on off button here on this on the back here where are we you can see that on off button there turn it on or off and uh, basically when you are using this camera in the vertical frame if you're taking portraits <coughs> like this you can actually press that button there should be working Hang on, I haven't got the camera turned on. That's a dumb thing to do. We'll turn the camera on now. The, the, the on-off switch is just up there alongside that button as well. Um, just over here. So, to use it in the vertical situation, see now it's just locking into focus there. And, uh, and of course you can also turn it this way and you use this for your focus up here. It's also got manual focus, of course. And one of the good things about this, this was way ahead of its time, it also had a uh, an autofocus, a back button autofocus, specially dedicated to the camera. There, you might hear that moving. Anyway, but that's that's a you can use that as a back button focus, which of course with all the modern digital SLRs, you can actually program your digital SLR to have a back button autofocus as well. So what else can I tell you about it? Up on the top here, 
it's got your uh, different metering segments, little dial there. One of the things with this camera, you've got to be a bit tricky. You can bump these sometimes, these little things. And uh, so that's the, the uh, that one there is the normal um, general metering. That's your spot metering, and that's your centre weighted. Whoops, hang on, get that one there. Centre weighted metering there. They're a bit fiddly, these little dials. And then up here you've got your uh, single shot, your self-timer shots, and your your multiple shots, your bracketing shots up, up there on that little dial there. And um, I've got an older style uh, lens on here. So if you've got your full range of, of programmable um, uh, uh, metering systems on here, um, aperture priority, all the normal things you would expect on a on a, uh, a, a high-end camera. And also on the, uh, the top here, this dial here is your shutter over here is your shutter compensation, sorry, your bracketing um, exposure compensation button. So you can, you know, program in extra f-stops or take it down a peg or two. And over here in the middle dial in here, you can also do some bracketing um, with uh, within those constraints of that. So you've got an inner and outer dial there. Uh, this wheel over here, um, if we put this on manual, see if we put this on manual, put that on say f8, and then at the moment so if i've got it on f8 it will select the it will select the actual shutter speed there which is going to be pretty low <laughs> on here so and this button here you can tr control whatever um, positions you've got it in you can come back to the programmed auto so i've got it on when i've got that on a that that's an a series lens got that on a and i've just got this normally turned on it's in the programmed auto mode at the moment hang on turned it off it's in the p mode um, hot shoe here you've also got a pc terminal on the side and um, all in all it's a pretty good camera and you've got a little window on the back here and one of the interesting things about this camera i'll just read out of the magazine here is um, it has a uh, a data recording facility that actually records data onto the film when you're taking the shots. The data recording facility imprints a swag of information onto the film. The film ID number and the ISO are recorded onto the leader section, while the exposure and metering modes, aperture and shutter speed settings and the compensation auto bracketing values, if applied, are indicated in the space between the image frame and the perforations. Again, this shows that somebody at Pentax has been thinking because most SLR data, data recording systems put the information between the frames, which means the films can't be cut. And uh, on the subject of film, it says goes on to say here, the MZS offers continuous frame advance at 2.5 frames per second. So, what can they say? The verdict that they've got down here uh, or it said, well, I'll just read a little bit about from from their test. This was a they they were testing a prototype of it. They weren't testing the the final production one, but uh, they said you don't have to use the MZS for very long to start appreciating its excellent ergonomics, effortless handling, and smooth operation. Pentax really have done a good job here, and it translates into a camera that is thoroughly logical and enjoyable. You also marvel that such a small SLR, it is quite compact, is so. Uh, is capable of so much, which is undoubtedly one of its key attractions, especially to anybody who's well and truly over the big camera syndrome. I wonder what that is. The verdict, the MZS represents a quite different approach to the top end of semi-professional 35mm SLR, but in breaking the mould, Pentax has come up with a very appealing and very workable alternative. The MZS has everything the working photographer will need and more than enough to keep the adventurous enthusiast very happy. Just whenever any whether anybody can now challenge the Canon Nikon dominance of this market sector remains to be seen. But it looks like Pentax is going to have a good go at it. And uh, I used this for some years after I, I bought it round about when that came out. Uh, 1995 was a recommended retail price in that uh, video there. And that's about what I paid for it, the body only. Um, so you can probably still get these 
on the uh, second hand market now but maybe with some difficulty you probably don't see them too much uh, forgot to say I don't think I said the flash sync speed is 180th of a second um, uh, for your flash sync speed little pop-up flash here of course which is a nice little flash turn that on pops up we'll take a shot over here and then you can see the flash go off I have got a film in the camera at the moment with all my film cameras I've got them loaded up with film and every now and then I shoot off a couple of frames and forget whatever f camera that was taken on <laughs> and uh, and one day or probably once a year around about Christmas time I take a whole bundle of films into the film lab and just get them to process them and then I have a look at what's worth scanning and what's not but I half the time I don't know what um, camera I took the shots on unless I've taken something to identify that roll of film so there you go the Pentax MZS it's a beautiful camera nice and chunky and solid nice ergonomics as they said this hand grip here fits into the you can see the, the hand grip there and that curves down into the the battery compartment at the bottom and um, I used to hook this up to my big Mets hammerhead flashes as well and use them um, as my go-to flash when I was doing weddings I think I've talked about that on other videos so there you have it, the Pentax MZS. Just line that up, take a shot. You can hear the shutter go off. Motor drive, of course, just winds it on. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Um, stay tuned. I haven't been doing a lot of uh, YouTube videos. I do more on my blog lately. But uh, keep watching, and um, we'll see what I come up with next time. Don't forget to like this video or subscribe if you want to. I haven't got a lot of subscribers, but gradually people are starting to find my my videos and, and look them up and, and, and the things that are on my blogs, which also cover a lot of photography as well. So once again, now I've got to try and make sure this thing turns off. Thanks again for watching. Here we go.